Number 85. Identify the electron pair geometry and the molecular structure of each of the following molecules. And then we have A through G. Okay, so we've done plenty of questions like this already, so we should have an overall idea. This is probably just for more practice for you guys. Just know that electron pair geometry and molecular structure come from Lewis structures. So for all of you that this is the first one that you're doing, and if you're not comfortable with Lewis structures, go back to question 40 um, in this chapter in which I go into depth into how to draw the perfect Lewis structure. So um, go back to those questions first and then come back here because I'm not going to teach you how to draw the Lewis structure. You, you guys should just be able to check your work with my work. All right. So we have to learn or we have to know how to draw the Lewis structures here, and then we can do electron pair geometry and molecular structure. Electron pair geometry, I will put over here, electron pair geometry, EPG, is basically just saying how many total things are surrounding or surround your central atom, all right? And the things that I'm talking about are either bonds and lone pairs, all right? So always look at the central atom to find electron pair geometry and molecular structure. It's never gonna come from the outer elements. It's always the central atom. And then molecular structure, I'll put this one, I guess I'll put it on the bottom here. Molecular structure is just how many total lone pairs. So first we always want to find the electron pair geometry, and then you can find the molecular structure from there, and it's still around the central atom. So it's still always that central atom that you care about. All right? Just know that your electron pair geometries are only going to come from these five over here, but then your molecular structure could be these five plus all of these. All right? So much more broad um, when you're doing molecular structure, but there's only that one column for electron pair geometry. And just know that electron pairs that they say over here is what I call things. So it's going to be your bonds or your lone pairs. So let's get started. A, CLNO, and they're telling you that nitrogen is the central atom. So if this is the case, if you draw the Lewis structure properly, you could pause the video and see if it matches up with mine, but you should get chlorine, a nitrogen, and then double bonded O. There's two lone pairs on the oxygen. There's one lone pair on the nitrogen, and the chlorine has three lone pairs. Now we only care about the central atom, which is nitrogen. How many total things are surrounding nitrogen? We're doing the electron pair geometry first. So in this example, it has one bond, right? A single bond, a lone pair, that's two things. And then this double bond is only counting as one. So you're saying technically you have one double bond. You don't have two single bonds. You have one double bond, one single bond, and one lone pair. So that's a total of three things. So don't be confused that... You see a double bond here, you're going to count it twice. You only count it once. So three, to uh, three total things. Number of electron pairs is three. So your electron pair geometry is trigonoplanar. So let's see. I'm going to, actually for this one, because I don't really have a lot of room at the top, I'm just going to put the answer over here. So your electron pair geometry would be trigonoplanar. Now you focus on, for molecular structure, you focus on your lone pairs for the central. And we just said it before, we have only one lone pair. We have two dots, but technically it's classified as one lone pair. So one LP. So three total things, one lone pair. We are talking about being bent or angular. I call it bent. So this would be bent. And that's the answer for A. Electron pair geometry is trigonoplanar. Um, molecular structure is bent. B. CS2. Lewis structure is carbon in the middle. Double bound to sulfur with two bonds. Two lone pairs. Double bound again to the other sulfur with two lone pairs, and that's the Lewis structure. Looking at the central atom, how many total things does this um, 
atom have? Well, it has one double bond and another double bond. So there's two things, not four. There's one double bond and another double bond. So that's a total of two things. No lone pairs, so just two is linear. So your EPG, your electron pair geometry, is linear, and there's no exceptions. You see how there's nothing for any lone pairs for electron pair equals two? So the molecular structure has to be the same, and it's true because there's zero lone pairs. So your molecular structure has to be linear as well. And that gets rid of B. C. Uh, Cl2. CO, they tell you that carbon is the central atom. So if we draw the Lewis structure properly, carbon's in the middle. There should be a double bond with oxygen and then two single bonds. And the chlorines have lone pairs to satisfy the octet rule. The carbon has the octet without any lone pairs. We look in the central atom. The central atom has how many total things? Well, it has one single bond, another single bond, and one double bond. So that's a total of three things. So three things is trigonoplanar, just like we said before. So electron pair geometry is trigonal planar. And now we look at lone pairs. Well, this carbon, this carbon has no lone pairs, right? You didn't see any dots. So zero lone pairs. So that means that the molecular structure would be three and zero. It actually would be the same. It would be trigonal planar. So both the electron pair geometry and the molecular structure is trigonal planar in this case. And that gets rid of C. So I'm going to erase. You could pause the video if you need to write down more stuff, but I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to erase. Let me see. Okay, let me just erase this, erase this, okie dokie. D, Cl2SO, and they tell me that sulfur is the central atom. So, sulfur in the middle, surrounded by two chlorines. Each chlorine has two lone pairs. Oh, sorry, three lone pairs, right? Because we need the octet. And in this case, we'll have a double bond to O, and in this case, the sulfur will have a lone pair if you do the Lewis structure properly. So now let's see. Sulfur is the central atom. It has one single bond, two, a double bond, which counts only as one, and a lone pair. So that's a total of four things. So four things, your electron pair geometry would be four. It would be tetrahedral. So electron pair geometry is tetrahedral. But now let's see, the sulfur has one lone pair. That's how you find the molecular structure. So four and one, we're now down to trigonal pyramid or trigonal pyramidal. Pyramidal. Okay, so that one was easy, D. Moving on, E. SO2F2, and they still tell me that sulfur is the central atom. So sulfur in the middle, surrounded by two fluorines. I'll put the fluorines on this side. And the fluorines need to have the lone pairs to satisfy the octet. Whoop. And then we're going to have double bond to oxygen, and then double bond to oxygen. And that would be the correct Lewis structure here. Sulfur is in the middle. Let's see, it has one single bond, two single bond, one double bond, and another double bond. So that's a total of four things. And four things, just like we said before, was tetrahedral. So your electron pair geometry is tetrahedral. And I just want to put up top here, this is your molecular structure for this one. Now let's look at the lone pairs to find out the uh, molecular structure. But in this case, there's no lone pairs, right? Sulfur didn't have any 
uh, you know, dots. So in this case, zero lone pairs, which means that our molecular structure would be four and zero. So it would be tetrahedral, same thing. And that gets rid of E. So I'm going to erase these. If you need to pause the video, you can, but I'm just gonna keep erasing. We got two more left to do. Just erase these. Okay. F. X, E, O, 2, F, 2. And they're telling me that xenon is the central atom. So xenon in the middle, fluorine with three lone pairs, fluorine again over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll do double bonded O up top, double bonded O on the bottom. And in this case now, uh, this needs to have one, two, three, four, five, six, one lone pair if you do the Lewis structure properly. Now let's check it. So xenon's in the middle. How many total things? It has a single bond, another single bond. That's two things. The double bond is a total of three things. This other double bond is the four things. And now you have one lone pair. So that's a total of five things. So your electron pair geometry would be five, and that's trigonal bipyramidal. So trigonal bipyramidal. Okay, and now we just look at the lone pairs. In this case, xenon has one lone pair, so one LP, which means that the molecular structure would be five and one. So we're down to sawhorse or seesaw. I like to say seesaw. And there you go. F is done. G, last one. CLOF2 plus. And it tells you that chlorine is the central atom. So let's see. Chlorine in the middle. Surrounded by two fluorines. One and two. Each fluorine needs to have the six electrons to make it have the octet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, it has an oxygen, so it's going to be a double bonded O. Let's see. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Just like this. It has a charge, so this needs to be bracketed and have a plus over here. Chlorine is the central atom. How many things are around this chlorine? It has a single bond. It has a, another single bond. That's two things. A double bond, so that's a total of three things. And the lone pair, which is four. So four things. So your electron pair geometry is four, which is tetrahedral. And then you look at your lone pairs. In this case, you have one lone pair. So one LP. So that means that your molecular structure would be four and one. Four and one is trigonal pyramidal. And there you go. G is done. 85 is done. Whew. So the only thing that I would suggest is perfecting your Lewis structures. But there's so many practice problems that we have done together that you can go back to make sure that you can do them so, so, so well. Um, the other thing that I would suggest is if your teacher or professor doesn't give you this chart, you probably are going to have to memorize it. So just take a couple of minutes out of your day each day to just memorize this chart and then it will become like second nature. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. If you want to help us out, please hit that subscribe button. That will help the channel out and get the word out to tons more students just like yourself who are taking the OpenStax textbooks. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Happy studying. See you later.